Hello and welcome to my astrophotography vlog. Today we will be capturing the Gamma Cygni or the Butterfly Nebula from my backyard. As you can see, there are a couple of clouds, but this doesn't matter as the clear patch is over there and the clouds are moving that way. Hopefully it will be a clear night tonight. So for today's shoot, we will be using a Tamron 200-70mm telephoto lens. As you can see here, you can easily change the zoom of this. Um, it's got a Vixen bar, which I bought separately. And it goes to f2.8, which is really good. I'm using this Canon EOS 7D. It is not modified. Uh, it is a mirror camera, so not full sensor. And since it is not modified and also since I have bottle 8 light pollution over here I will be using this filter it's the astronomic COS EOS APC APS-C clip-in filter so now we'll attach the lens and then I'll just click it in like this and do it to manual focus and then we are good to go I'm just going to connect the telescope now and put this to the telescope, align the telescope and make sure that we can see things on the screen over there. Okay, so here we are. I set up the telescope and um, it is all polar aligned. I checked the stellarium here to see where Polaris was in um, respect to the polar axis. And so now the camera wants me to connect it. So I'm gonna click on that. So here we have the camera. Um, you can see the settings here and we will now align the telescope in Stellarium now if you don't know how to do it I will show it now it's very quick very easy you do you just click on this if your telescope is connected via a port no you do have to connect that you can't connect it wirelessly so what you need to do is you need to go to add telescope it's really easy you just put in the name of your telescope Stellarium directly through a serial port or you can also just do a test and you don't do anything through port and that's just nothing simulate one the connection delays just okay and if it's connected you will actually see these settings automatically so all there is to it is to just click OK and then your telescope will be in this list and then the only thing you need to do now is press start it's connected and here you get the mini screen and I usually don't use that and here you can see where the telescope is pointing right now I put it on this star as an alignment star very close to the crescent nebula and the butterfly nebula now if you have a target like uh, say for example this nebula and this is my telescope well my telephoto lens now if you want to move it to the middle of the screen press alt 
one. As you can see, the telescope is now slewing. You can also always press Control one but then it will only go to the marked target. So if you want to have it in the middle of the screen, Alt-1. Now to test if it's good, I'm going to do Alt-1 on uh, this bright star here. Alt-1. Slewing towards it now. And then I'm going to do a 10 second exposure. And as you can see, this is very, very neat because you can see there's not much haze at all. And the star is almost perfectly in the middle. Okay, so I'm back. I did a complete realign and I tested um, with spinning around Polaris to see uh, how well it turns around it uh, or, or around the equatorial middle, basically and it turns around it pretty well so i'm going to test the alignment on um, let's do the veil nebula just to have a see what's actually there because i've never actually done this one before so i'm curious to see as well and because i've done a realign i need to start it again voila and it is now slewing towards the Veil Nebula, which I have never photographed before. I'm going to try an exposure. I'm going to start it now. I think I might actually do this instead of the Andromeda Galaxy if it shows up really nicely in the raw frame. Because I've never done this before and I have done the Andromeda Galaxy. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's a new target. Or um, the Butterfly Nebula. So I'll try both. So it's about 45 seconds now. I think that's about good enough. And, ooh, wow, we really are starting to see something here. I'm going to open it in Photoshop. That looks very nice. You can already see some of the colors. So this is purely to see what's there. And you can see this nebula is showing up like that. If we go to the right, then this nebula here is showing up over there. So this is a very good candidate. And then I'm going to try it on um, the Butterfly Nebula near Sadr. I already done that one, but I'm curious to see uh, how well it does with my uh, new skills because I did that about well a couple of months ago, and I only did about 20 minutes of exposure on that then because I thought that 20 minutes would be enough, but clearly it's not enough. 20 minutes is not enough for anybody who's thinking. I thought that in the beginning. I made the mistake, you shouldn't be ashamed, but get more data, at least like, at least two hours of data and preferably over four hours of data is very good and it also depends on the focal length because if you've got very low light gathering power, um, the you need more exposure time. So it is almost on it and voila and start the picture. So now I'm going to wait for about 40 seconds. 40 seconds, I think, is enough for this. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, I have found my target for the night. Um, look how good this is. And over here, you can see the Crescent Nebula, even. So that's the Crescent Nebula, and you can see the clusters. Okay, I am... And this is a meteor, even. Okay, count me in for this target. It does need to go a little bit more to the left, though or well a little bit more this way um but for the rest it's this is phenomenal so that's very good 